So first of all, I'm just going to give a trigger warning. I will be talking about some emotional topics like suicide. So if anybody's bothered by that and feels the need to leave at any point, that's totally fine. Um, first of all, I want to say, um, who am I? This talk is mostly about my journey through the, um, the world of mental health. So I need to describe roughly who I am. I grew up in New Zealand. This is me in an adorable mode, dressed as a uh, cowboy and when I was at the age of four at kindergarten. Um, I had a lifelong interest in cars. This is a green Hamilton Avenger Alpine that my mum managed to wrap around a power pole in, when I was five years old. Um, after that, I got obsessed with toy cars, com did competitive mini four-wheel drive racing, radio control cars. And as an adult now, I do sim car racing online, including against uh, somebody many, many of you may know, Max Verstappen, who is a lot faster than I am. Oh. <laughs> yeah, huge fan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I figured being in the Netherlands, most people would be. Um, lived in lots of countries. One of them was Canada. If you want to really annoy your landlord, build an ice rink on your front lawn. This is my front lawn there. Really upset him. Then I moved to Norway. And then I saw the light and moved somewhere much sunnier. I was actually expecting when I came here it was going to be colder, but actually it was colder in Berlin when I came here. Uh, I became a chemist at one point. This is me before I realized it was better to shave my head than hold on to the last vestiges of hair. And then I discovered this thing, which many of you may remember or have heard of before, called WordPress. And I started building plugins and themes, mostly open source things for the public then moved on to getting paid to build them for commercial plugin and theme companies, and then did web agency work. But amongst all of this fun, I had a lifelong depression issue. Actually, I shouldn't say lifelong. Up until the age of five, everything seemed to be fine. After that, I was getting frequently asked, why are you not smiling more? Why are you like so sad all the time? And I was always like, I don't know. It's just who I am. I was getting almost daily nightmares for like 35 years. I actually thought this was normal. I didn't realize this was abnormal until the last few years. Um, it was the same nightmares over and over again, repeating. And uh, when I was preparing these slides, I looked up the depression rate worldwide. Turns out this is actually quite a hard thing to measure, but it's roughly eight to 15% of uh, pe people in high-income countries tend to be depressed at any one time. So that probably means that 8 to 15% of the people at this conference are probably depressed right now. Since this is a mental health talk, maybe it's a little higher in this room, <laughs> I suspect. <laughs> maybe not. I see lots of people smiling, so that's a good sign. Then around 2017, I started to get a huge anger problem. Most people I see, I see around who get angry, they get angry, they throw things, they get angry at somebody. I was getting angry at people, but I didn't really have anything to properly get angry at them for. And so in my head, I was just thinking, oh, I'm, ang I'm annoyed at you for doing this. And then in my head, I was imagining things that they could have done in the past that would be affecting me now, and I would get enraged about it. And I was like, this is not good. Like, why is my mind even doing this? This is really confusing me. Now, I had no idea Milan was going to be here <laughs> when I prepared this slide. <laughs> he even mentioned our trip to Nepal here. Do you remember this picture tape being taken, Milan? Yeah. You don't, actually, because this is actually our heads cropped out and stuck on another picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the postcard. This is where you showed me no. the postcard. No. Nope. It might be the faces, <laughs> might be the faces, but it was the background was different. <laughs> But we're walking through the Himalayas, beautiful scenery as far as the eye could see, and Milan kept saying, why are you acting weird? And I was like, I don't feel I'm acting weird. But like, I'd, I'd have my phone in my right pocket, and then for some reason it would transfer to my left pocket, and I would stand up and start walking. I was like, where's my, where's my pocket? Where's my, where's my phone gone? And I'm in a panic. And Milan was like, calm down. Like, it's not that big a deal, it's just a phone. And he was like, why are you getting so agitated over everything? I was like, I'm not agitated. This is just the way I am. Do you remember this? Yeah, I see a nod. But yeah, I was just like, uh, it's just the way I am. But deep down, I knew it wasn't the way I was. 
And when I got back to Berlin after this trip, I sat down and I was like, I have a problem here. I'm constantly angry. I'm, did I miss a slide? I didn't miss a slide. I missed part of this slide, sorry. So at one point during all this anger that I was feeling, I noticed I was getting a headache and I was like, that's annoying. So I went, trundled off to the doctor and the doctor said, ah, okay, here's some paracetamol and some caffeine pills. And I was like, okay, I was expecting I'm getting headache for like three months. I thought they would do like a brain scan or something, but he was like, they, we don't do that for a headache. So like, okay, but I, I don't need, I don't need caffeine. I'll just have some Coke Zero because that tastes a lot better. And he was like, oh, no, 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 no. That's full of sugar. I was like, dude, it has no sugar. It's Coke Zero, zero sugar. And he goes, <laughs> he goes, it was like, no, no, there's no such thing. It definitely has sugar. And I had to pull a bottle out of my bag and say, look, 0% sugar. And he was like, is it maybe just a typo on the bottle? I was like, <laughs> dude, no. It's definitely no sugar. He was like, well, okay, maybe. But it, it, you're never going to be able to measure the dosage. And I was like, I can just calculate how much caffeine is in there and just measure out how much coke. And he goes, it's way too complicated. Like, it's a very complicated procedure. At this point, I'm actually getting angry at him. And I was like, <laughs> I'll, I'll just take the tablets, took the pills, or took the prescription, walked out of the his office, dumped the prescription in the rubbish bin on the way out, and went home and had some Coke Zero and paracetamol. When I was sitting there, chugging away very large, like a liter of Coke Zero he'd basically prescribed me, inadvertently, and I was getting so angry at him for just not being able to understand what Coke Zero was. I was like, Argh! I was like, clenching my jaw, and then I suddenly realized where my headache came from. I'd been clenching my jaw for three months, and that was causing these stupid headaches. And then when I got back to Berlin after our Nepal trip, I realized I had to find some solution. And I was like, I have an idea to get rid of all of my depression and my anger all together. And I'd always found that building WordPress plugins was a very calming thing for me. And this time I had another idea with a WordPress plugin. I made one which was able to send messages to my friends and family basically explaining where I was, how I ended up there, schedule some blog posts into the future, explaining um, things about my life, what I've been up to. Then contacted the authorities by email, and it connected to some hardware. The plugin was a WP content slash plugin slash the end. Um, the authorities were being alerted um, sorry, I alerted where my body would lie, and the hardware it connected to was, sorry, <coughs> the hardware it was connecting to was to kill me. I was about ready to connect all this together, and I wrote this Facebook post. Um, this is actually a paraphrased version of the original, but it said, I've been under a lot of stress lately. It feels irrational. I thought perhaps a way to alleviate it may be to face one of my fears. So I did tonight. I haven't felt so terrified since I was a small child. Hopefully I can move on from it now. And after that, I threw out this hardware I bought and deleted all of the code, which will never see the light of day again. Since I'm here, you know that I didn't use it, obviously. Um, there were lots of nice comments coming in from people, the expected thing if you say you're stressed about something, but what really surprised me was I was getting messages from nine specific people who all had extremely similar problems. And they were really spilling their guts to me, telling me the whole life story. And I was like, oh, if you talk to many friends about this? And they're like, oh, no, 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 I can't possibly talk to friends about this. And I was like, how come? And they're like, oh, they wouldn't understand. I was like, okay, if you, if you tried therapy, and some of them said, yeah, they had tried therapy. Some of them had done it for like two years. I felt better, but I still had this underlying anger, which I couldn't explain. I didn't know where it was coming from. Two years later, no further improvement. And so I started looking for other means to improve my situation. And I started reading up about psilocybin therapy. Psilocybin, for any of you who don't know, is the active ingredient in magic mushrooms and magic truffles. 
And in particular, there's this study I've linked here from Imperial College London into the treatment of treatment-resistant depression. So people who have been treated for depression via various other means, psychotherapy, antidepressants, many other methods, but they all failed. But when they treated them with psilocybin therapy, a very large number of them were getting huge results, very positive results. And there was one presentation online that I found from uh, Dr. Rosalind Watts, who was one of the researchers on this project, and she quoted one of the study participants who said, I want to know why I'm depressed. I just don't know why. I wish I could know. I wish I could understand. And I suddenly realized, this is, this is me. I wanted to know why I was depressed. I knew I was depressed, but I had no explanation for why I was depressed. Didn't know why I was angry either. So with all this on board, February 12th, 2021, um, my therapist on hand and somebody else uh, available to tend to me at the time, I chugged a rather nasty tasting glass of orange juice with psilocybin compound in it, lay down on a sofa with a blindfold on, which is the procedure used in this study that was conducted in the UK, and proceeded to have my brain completely explode. I was seeing these streams of purple symbols, little rectangles with symbols on them flying in, thousands of them, and there would be purple ones and then green ones, purple ones and green ones. I was like, this is super weird. I was like, what the heck's going on? And then I suddenly realized I had this deep love for the purple symbols. And I was like, that's weird. And then I was like, whoa, I also have love for these green symbols. I was like, what the heck? I was like, why do I love the purple symbols? And then suddenly one of them shot up, boom, hit me in the face. And it was a picture of a Limoges plate, which is something my mother collected when I was a small child. And they were either dark blue or dark red. Dark blue and dark red together makes purple. So somebody, somehow, my brain had symbolized my mother as the color purple. And this is a woman who I really felt I had very little connection with until this moment. And suddenly I'm feeling this deep, deep, deep love for. And then I was like, well, what the heck is the green symbols? And then boom, I had this vision in my head of my dad driving home in the green car that I showed you guys earlier, home from work, park outside, walk up through all the green foliage. I'm looking at him through the window. Then I'll run around the outside of the house. He'll come in and around through our very badly decorated 1970s vintage green laundry and greet me. And then he'd go down on his knees and hug me. And I was like, whoa. So my dad is apparently some green symbol in my head. And I was like, oh, this is strange. And then I was like, why are this, why are some of them have a tool symbol on them? And then I suddenly realized the most positive experience I have from my dad from childhood was working in the basement where he was building things. And at this point, I just had a complete meltdown. The thing I said before about not being able to cry since 12, totally not true. My tear ducts definitely work. <laughs> I was like streaming nonstop. And then I suddenly realized, why is my website green? Geek.halia.kiwi. And then I realized I had previously made it green because my, my connection with my dad is relating to building things. I symbolize him as green in my head. And I'd subconsciously made my website green because this website is about building things with WordPress. <coughs> and since then, I've actually found a whole bunch of things in my life where I've color coded things without realizing. I'm wearing red for a reason. And then I was sitting there crying, and I was like, I'm trying to find out why I'm angry. So I started asking, why am I angry? And more purple and green symbols are flying in. I was like, this is not helpful. I'm not angry at my parents. So what the heck's going on here? And I screamed myself in my head, why are you angry? And then in the distance popped up this brown orange symbol. And I was like, oh, that looks <coughs> ominous. And I was like, come a bit closer. And it came a bit closer. And I couldn't really work, work out what it was. And I was like, come closer. And then it just sort of like wavered, which indicated to me that this was something I was never meant to see. And, and the next moment, I just yelled at myself internally to make it come to me, and it went thump straight in front of me, and I saw the most terrifying looking thing I'd ever seen in my life was a brown orange tree, which symbolized apparently everything that I was afraid of in life. I'm very lucky I didn't have a code brown in my pants at that point, because I was absolutely terrified. And then it just disappeared, and I said to my therapist, you are correct, I have a fundamental attachment to my parents which she really liked. <laughs> she said she's never seen anybody flip from 
saying they have no attachment of their parents to the extreme opposite, like in about an hour. So she was very happy with all of this and very happy that I was crying. But I still had no idea why I was angry or why I was depressed. And then over the next two weeks, I was having the same sort of nightmares I had my whole life, but they were extremely vivid. The drug is long gone from my system at this point. But all of a sudden, these color connections that I had learned from the, the psilocybin experience, <clears throat> I suddenly realized applied to all of my dreams. And I started patching things together over the next week as to what each of these dreams meant in some way. And then at the two-week mark, I was like, I figured, I figured out a bunch of interesting things, but I still don't know why I'm depressed and why I'm angry. And then I was like, well, there's only one dream I haven't had yet. And it suddenly hit me like a brick to the face. And it was this one symbolized here of, it was of my grandfather pulling up uh, in a green car, the same one we had when I was a child. I was standing beside a power pole on the side of the road and my grandfather asked me to get into the car. My grandfather was colored orange, which is actually the color he was the last time I saw him because he was dead in the funeral home. They just put bad makeup on him after he died and he was orange. And I would get in the car and my whole life I'd been waking up in a cold sweat, panicking. And I was like, huh. I told lots of people this story and everybody said, oh, it's because you're, you're upset about your grandfather dying. But I always said I didn't fear, feel any fear of my grandfather at this point. It was something else, but I didn't know what. And suddenly I realized it's the power pole was the one that I mentioned earlier that my mum wrapped our car around on February 12th, 1985. I'd never been allowed to process that. My brother was extremely badly injured. I was shuttled off to my grandparents, and I was asked not to discuss it in the family because it stressed out my brother who was badly injured. It stressed out my mum who was very traumatized by it. My dad didn't want to talk about it. I was asked not to talk to the kids at school about it in case they went and bugged my brother about it. So I just held in all of the stress for like close to 40 years. And at this point, uh, well, actually one important point, I found this out a few weeks later. The car crash is listed as happening on February 12th, 1985 in my medical records, and I did the psilocybin trip on February 12th, 20, 2021. I don't know if that's coincidence. I'm thinking it's probably not, but my brother noticed the um, correlation there when I told him about this story later. So the after effects of this was this was the happiest I've been since five years of age, and it's held this way since this is three years ago, I think now. I'd learned that getting to the root of my emotion problems allowed me to solve those problems and solve a lot of my stress. I have no nightmares. That's actually not quite true. I have no recurring nightmares and they're very mild. I discovered that crying is good. I actually went to visit Remkosh de Fries a few weeks ago and I was telling him some, some very emotional stories and I burst into tears in front of him. In the past there's no way I would have done that, but I've now realized that whenever I cry about something, it just releases this tension out of my system. So if anybody, anybody here is like, oh, I don't cry because I want to be a like, tough guy, bad idea. It took me to like 40 something years of age to realize that this is a, not, a, not a good problem, not a good idea. The only negative effect I noticed was my resting heart rate shot up to around 95 beats per minute. And this is like overnight. During the day, it would be like 120 beats per minute, which is pretty high considering my resting heart rate now is about 58. Um, I think my brain was just processing a lot of stuff from the past rather abruptly for three months. Um, conclusion is us developers are not robots, and this probably applies to everybody in the tech industry. Um, I think a lot of people see us, we're churning out websites, plugins, articles, whatever it is you're doing. We're all emotional beasts. Um, we hide a lot of emotional things from ourselves, or at least I did. Emotions are a lot more complicated than I think many of us realize. Most of all, if any of this resonates with you um, or you think it applies to somebody you know, I think seeking help or getting therapy is by far the best option. Um, you are absolutely not alone. There are many people, I'm standing up here and talking, but I'm sure there are many people at this event here today with similar stories. Maybe not crazy stories about colored symbols flying at them, but they have had similar um, resolutions to their issues. Um, a very important note is be careful with drugs. I didn't just like go get a bunch of truffles and like 
chugged them at a party. This was like two years of therapy. My therapist monitoring me the whole time, people assisting, um, and then another year of therapy after that. So this wasn't just a big drug-fueled solution that I, I found here. Um, big thank you to my friends and family who I thought might find my story a bit weird. Um, but the biggest thank you probably to the Stratic team. Some of you will know the Stratic company. Um, I was working for them at the time. I was actually the first employee of the company. And we have this very cool team here. Um, most of us are gone now from the team. But I was expecting when I went to them and said, yeah, I just did a bunch of drugs and I'm seeing like purple and green symbols and I'm freaking out and I need two weeks off work that that would be a problem. But they were very understanding like super understanding, and I will be forever appreciating that of them. I have a quick note here that doesn't apply to me, but will apply to possibly some of you in this room. A lot of people do remote work, and I see a lot of remote workers who just work from home all the time. This is a quote from a member of the WordPress community from many years ago who said, working alone all day, how do you cope with seeing no one? Turns out they had seen no one but the person they bought their groceries from for like three months. I was like, I think you should find some solution to that. Um, my solution is I go to co-working events, um, I work in libraries with a lot of other people, cafes, I often run, um, I just gather a lot of people together for a co-working session in a hotel lobby, we just gate crash a hotel lobby. They have good air conditioning, food, water, Wi-Fi usually works really well. It's excellent. I just think that's a good way to keep some sort of uh, personal connection going, which is, I think, very good for people's personal health. Um, last thing, I'm unemployed right now, so if you're hiring, let me know. And thank you very much for listening.